Shall we dust off the repotting cobwebs? <laughs> hey! And yeah, it's gonna be hammer time as well. This is Procatabola Golden Peacock. She was not on my radar, but she is now. Please do not adjust your sets. We are under the umbrella on the east side of the patio. Hey! Right, so she wasn't on my radar when it came to planning my repots. But having said that, <laughs> but she is in desperate dire straits of a cleanup. Again, this is the first proper repot for a very, very long time. So I'm just gonna find my repotting vibes and legs and see if she'll come out without the hammer. Otherwise, I'm gonna bring out the big guns. Procatavolas are usually extremely pot bound. And this one is so at least there's give at the base of the pot that'll help so whatever is holding on it's only because it's all at the top the last time i repotted this orchid <laughs> the hammer wasn't part of my equipment and i had to cut the pot open and i really don't want to be doing that anymore so let's see if we can't pull her out she's also growing new roots that's why I'm going in. And the last time I repotted her was also early, early spring. So we're we're on track with Pro Cat of Olive Peacock. I also want to give her a super clean up around the base of the pseudobulbs because she has been inclined to get scale. So I don't want to carry those over. And I do believe I have two pieces in here from if memory serves me right and we are going to clean off the back pseudobulbs. So we have some dead roots but we have a lot of live ones and we have new roots growing. And this is going to be much much easier because I can get into the back bulbs that I want to get rid of these guys here and clean her up properly. It's going to be a little bit easier than having to peel out all the lecker. You can see that the dead roots are in the back. Theoretically, I could just cut right now, but I want to make sure that I don't destroy what's viable around the outside here. So we'll just take our time, enjoy the beautiful sunshine, and do this orchid some justice and get you down a little bit further because I'm going to sit down for this job. Theoretically, I could have left the umbrella up, but I can assure you that it is so much more pleasant to be sitting in the shade. I know, I know, right? Here I've been banging on about, eh, it's so cold, I want sun, I want sun. But at the end of the day, for the sake of the orchid, I want to make sure that she's going to be okay. And the shade isn't that cold at all, because normally the shade now would be rather chilly, and only is it nice in the sunshine, but not today. So we'll just take advantage of the circumstances and do this orchid some justice, give her a clean up, start tentatively around the outside and work our way in. We can also start in the back and work our way forward. It looks a bit dark on the camera, so I hope that it doesn't appear too dark as the video progresses. I did say don't adjust your screen, but to do this in blistering sunshine would be a big mistake, even though it's not super duper hot. This orchid has not been exposed to that much light during the winter. Yes, I've been carrying her outside whenever the weather was favorable, but still to be in direct sun right now on the east side where everything is much more amplified because also the facade is reflecting white. Yeah, I don't want to do that. Repots are stressful for orchids. Not so much for us. At least I think repots are super, super therapeutic. I enjoy them very much, especially when I have time and I don't feel like I need to rush. I love repotting orchids. It's always nice to get an orchid back into a clean pot. So we want to make sure that we don't think of us, only think of the orchid when we repot. 
That's why also, always a good idea, wait for new roots if you can, if you have the time, if the orchid is healthy, if you don't have to intervene. Don't do it until you have new roots. I take out the dead, but if I have a kink in a root, even though it's good, I take that off. More often than not, a kink in semi-hydro won't survive. On some orchids it does. Hybrids especially, they are definitely more robust. They are able to cope with more aggressive behavior because they've been bred to be vigorous. They're not as fussy, but still. If we start to cut corners with one, then we forget when we're actually dealing with a fussy one. We get into the rhythm of, oh, it doesn't matter, or oh, it's not fussy, oh, I can do this, and all of a sudden we are dealing with the fussy one, and <clears throat> that's when we can start causing problems for our orchids. So, let me see. I'm not intending to separate them. That's not the aim of the game, even though two pieces are in here back to back. But I don't want to be cutting away dead roots individually if when I cut the rhizome they're just going to come off with the pieces. So the idea being just to go in and get rid of all the old pseudobulbs that are in the center. Of course, I do need to get the lecker out though, before my snips go in. I want to cut through here. I want to get all the dirty bulbs out in the back. That's one. See, then we can just pull it out, dead roots and all. The rhizome is looking lovely jubbly. That's awesome. Now, is the other side going to be just as gracious, just as simple? I want to go in here. I have a deck up underneath. old fern roots. <laughs> We're back to hunting fern roots. This rhizome here is a little bit tighter, so I may just start with the bad part right in the back here, the older part. Check that out. That's all good. That's all perfectly fine. I would like to get rid of this bulb, so we just rip it off. I think that would make a better job of it than if I go in with secateurs. This bulb is rotting at the base, or it's got a cut in it, so we can take that off as well. Let's have a look-see. Let's see if it's actually rotted, or if it was just damaged by the previous repot at some point. No, it started to deteriorate on its own. A little bit of rot had it started there, but it stopped. Like I said, scale at the base of this orchid was quite predominant. So this is a good time to get in there and really get my alcohol out and clean up. And now we can be pedantic with cleaning out the individual root system. So I just made a mistake. I'm going to dig around. When I find it, I'll show you what mistake I made. I'm going to continue working around this and then I'll be back. I'll show you my error, okay? Okay, now that I have you in this position, <laughs> you see it's very easy to consider 
this a bad route right here? This one. What I did before, I saw a brown root, I cut it, and it is actually quite all right. And I hope that this is in focus. The camera angle is a little bit off. It's hard to see, but you see, this one's all right. But it was just as brown as this one is. And I didn't squeeze it before touching it. So I cut off a good root, which is, you know, it's okay in the grand scheme of things, and that is why it's best to wait for new roots to come before going into a radical project like this. It's good to wait for new roots at any point in time with a repot. But having said that, you make a mistake like this, it's going to be all right because we're right at the base here. I hope you can see that. Let me lift her up a little bit more right there. Oh. Oh well, trust me, there is a root tip right at the base there. So because the pieces are a little bit wobbly, it's a bit difficult. But that was my mistake. I should have squeezed the root first just to check if it's still viable and not go by color only. Anyway, we're almost, almost there. Give her another little bit of a clean up. This root is viable and I'd like to keep it still okay. But if it's going to become a nuisance, I will take it off. Nuisance as in, what if I kink it, you know? If I then kink it, well, oh well, we'll just have a dead root in the pot. You see, my aim is to clean her up to such a degree I won't need to be doing this for another two or three years. That's the plan. Now I'm going to work along this network here because we've got death down there. But what I'm going to do here is take off the lower 30%, like Figaro. And I just said I don't cut into good roots. When it comes to length like this, I'm not going to untangle that network to get at the dead roots. I'm going to risk this because this is a very vigorous root grower. So it's going to be okay for the grand scheme of things. And should she dump the roots that I just cut, it's a possibility, but at least we were going to secure airflow, oxygen exchange, all that fun stuff for a considerable amount of time. So we're thinking ahead, trying to think ahead and protect the roots that are coming as opposed to, oh my goodness, I don't want to cut into good roots. Now, the ratio of failure is something I cannot actually disclose because I don't live in the pot myself. <laughs> it would be super interesting. It's just if I don't have to do what I'm doing now, then I don't do it. But these guys in here would be ideal to get some of the dead roots out. Just because we're good in time. I haven't found anything that has taken away from what I need to be doing next. So we'll just keep going. Alrighty, while the cinnamon is doing its thing, <laughs> let's get some protection down here with some garlic alcohol. I have really opened up the spaces in between. Who knows, maybe in a couple of years the back eyes will activate. I don't see anything viable. Doesn't mean that a Pro Catavola Golden Peacock cannot actually activate eyes anywhere and everywhere. Having cut off all the bad bulbs, let's just say there were viable bulbs back there, but viable in a sense, just a storage. Not. I didn't see any feasible eyes that I would even consider propagating. I'm just trying to stay away from the new root tips with the alcohol. I just want to make sure that finally this orchid gets a little bit of a makeover down here. Now that could be a good eye down there. It's also got a little bit of black at the base. Results and signs of previous scale. What I'm really happy about is that this orchid has had no scale throughout the winter. I was just being vigilant, watching her, protecting her, continuously spraying, whereas 
Coming into the spring of 2022, this orchid, I had more difficulty getting the scale under control while they were in the crawler stage. Such a high humid spring for such a long time. I was always watching this orchid every single day. This winter, totally fine. I didn't have to be so pedantic about my scale vigilance, which is awesome. I'm very, very pleased. Even though I do see damage of the same down here on some of the base and that one pseudobulb that we saw that didn't quite make it even though it looked fine at the top that was already a target for the scale but we have a great eye right here oh look at that that could be of interest there perfect now i'm going to clean up the pots we're going to pot her up oh and these are the spoils of what we got out of her plus whatever's in the catch tray that I didn't pick out properly. But anyway, this is making me feel great. It's like we've never stopped repotting here on the patio. <laughs> so, just clean my pots. I didn't need to do any sterilizing. Same pot, same orchid. But I gave her some new microfibers that have been sterilized. And I sterilize my microfiber by 50 parts bleach, 50 parts water, for as long as I can remember that the microfiber's in there. And then I really, really rinse it out really well. And then I have them soaking in RO water for as long as I can remember. Eventually I take them out and then they're dry. So two of them, vigorous orchid, a little bit of a loop to aid with the wicking, my support. Not that I think this orchid needs to be supported in the pot, but for the purposes of displaying spikes, sometimes it's nice to have a support in there. And if need be, of course, if the orchid now needs to be supported, I've got it done. So then I'm filling up with water. This is RO water. Because I want my Lekka to be able to go in and around the root system nice and easy without bashing the velamen after we've been so horrible to it. Get her in there. And then I see some more fern roots. How could I miss fern roots? I hate them. They don't hurt the orchid, I just don't like them. So I'd like to get her somewhat into the middle, somewhat respecting new eyes might open. Don't want her up against anything now that we've created all that air. I don't want to squish her up too tightly either. So I'm just twisting her around as far as the existing roots will let me. Making sure that my support isn't going to go every which way but where I want it to. So here we go. Another example of uh, the first people to get three arms will be orchid hobbyists. <laughs> so that's what I would like to achieve. We can always mess around with her position, but the support should be straight. Let's see what we've got ourselves into by pouring that much lecker in at once. Let's give it a jiggle. The support having been my focus could sometimes be a little bit too much lecker in one go just because it starts to create its own little gridlock but with the water that all helps a lot. Don't want her too high in the pot. Not just yet. And I'm using small lecker because again vigorous in my previous set up I could see that she had large leka in it as well. I'm not doing that this time. Now while I'm doing this I'm also trying to respect her direction of growth what she was accustomed to with light. So there's more going on here than just putting an orchid into a pot. I'm really trying to respect every angle so that I don't burn any leaves when I put her outside that her direction of growth is the same when I place the pot onto the shelf, all that. Hoping I'm going to get that right. That is the intention anyway. I don't like how close this growth is at the side, so I'm going to guard against that by putting Lekka here first. Because while I have two pieces in here, I have three directions of growth.
All right. There we go. I think we did a great job on this. So before I unpotted her, I soaked her in calcium and magnesium. So now the reservoir can be with fertilized water. She is an active growth. Root growth is active growth. I've got one obnoxious root here, sort of bouncing up and out. But if that starts to fail, well, then I can always cut it off and pull it out very, very gently. But for now, we still need the tag. I'm hoping that we don't have to address this orchid for another two or three years. And if we have to address her sooner, hey, hey, that's great news all the time, right? So we'll just get it back in there. All done. I so appreciated your company here with me on the east side. Thank you so much for being here. I would also appreciate it if you would do two more things for me. One is like the video. That would mean a lot. And if you haven't subscribed, would you please consider subscribing? That would help out tremendously as well. Everybody who has already subscribed, oh, you're my heroes. Thank you so, so much. I'm going to put Pro Catabola back into the blooming alley just to give her some late afternoon sun where she can dry out at the base. We got everything done. Root tips on the go. yippee i -A. You have yourself a fabulous day. Another rhyme. There you go. <laughs> but I do attach a condition to that, that you please stay safe. Take care. Bye.